Another strategy that's been used by schools is to have parents form support groups that meet in somebody's home. Now the parents who come out for talks like this are the most committed parents. You are here because you take parenting very, very seriously. But in fact, most parents don't turn out for talks like this. So we have to find other ways to encourage them to get together and to think about family life and to think about parenting. And this is one approach that's been more successful than just simply having a sponsored lecture, which is a good idea. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm glad you're here. But the parent support group takes place in somebody's home. It's facilitated by a parent. It's not a complicated job to facilitate the group. People sit in a circle. Typically, there are four married couples. They are, have children in the same age group. And the parent facilitator says to the people who are there, what would you like to talk about? What issue would you like to discuss today? And the parents go around, and they suggest the topic that they would like to address. It might be television. It might be the internet. It might be, um, how do you deal with Facebook? It might be chores. How do you get kids to do them? If you have teenagers, it might be, what do you do about the family car? How should you handle that privilege? If it's homework, how do you get your kids to do it? So the parents pick the subject. And there are several suggestions, and then the parents decide which one they want to talk about first, and if they get down the list, they can talk about more than one topic in an evening. And the parents find this to be a very valuable experience. First of all, they are asked to share both success stories. Here's what works for me in, in handling the homework castle. You know, our child has to do with homework before he can do anything else. There's no TV, there's no going out, and the homework comes first, you know, pleasure, first and duty, or excuse me, duty first. <laughs> duty before pleasure. Work first, pleasure second. And so, um, so a parent might share a success strategy, and then a parent might sh share a struggle. Here's a challenge that we, you know, we don't know um, how, what limits to put on Facebook time. Uh, our, our daughter is constantly texting. There was a journalist recently who wrote a column because his daughter had developed an actual addiction to texting. She was up to 15,000 text messages a month. Can you imagine? 15,000 messages a month. She kept her Blackberry next to her pillow at that so she wouldn't miss any messages. So the, she had a, a big problem because of her obsession with uh, texting. Um, but that's an extreme case. However, the, the general challenge, how do we deal with all the media, the technology, how do we keep that under control? How do we avoid that from from distorting our child's life, becoming a, a problem in family life. So that might be a topic for discussion. Parents who participate in these family group, in these peer groups that meet in somebody's home, develop real friendships. They stay in touch with each other. They, sometimes the group continues right through adolescence. It might start when the children are in primary school and the parents are still meeting when their kids are in, are in uh, secondary school. And now they're dealing with teen issues. Uh, how do you deal with drinking? How what about parties and in the car and so on? And so the, the support group becomes an important support system for the parents. And they gain greater confidence in, in setting limits, in exercising authority, and they pick up a lot of strategies for dealing with problems. So these are things that schools can facilitate. And if your school doesn't do any things to create the partnership between families and, and the school, I would I would encourage you to, to ask your school if it could actually do that.